Today we are going to start a new module where we would be focusing exclusively on how our own emotions they are appraised by us, how do we experience our emotion, but that is not our prime focus. Our primary focus is that how our emotions play a role in making ourselves more and more adjusted. Okay. Uh, what we would do is that we would initially uh, know begin uh, with the basic concept of uh, emotion. Those of you who have been to the introductory psychology course know you must have read emotions at length there. Here I would uh, know for the benefit of those who have not been into uh, the introductory psychology course what I would do is uh, very quickly I will summarize the main thrust uh, know in this area the knowledge that exists a very very crisp type of uh, very quick type of a summary and then we would move towards uh, understanding emotions with respect to uh, know what is needed by the society what is needed by the environment okay how do we experience it and why is it that uh, know uh, we experience certain type of an emotion okay in a given type of situation based on what we think of it that the that is the whole appraisal factor in uh, emotion okay and we would primarily uh, know take the goal congruent emotions and the goal incongruent emotions we will basically know the basic uh, emotions we will bifurcate them into two clusters and then for each of them we would see that what is the primary appraisal process what is the secondary appraisal process and why finally something makes us happy something makes us jealous something makes us guilty okay that would be the focus and for each of them we would then try to understand that is it that my happiness has you know made me more and more adjusted given the type of situation i was experiencing so this is the whole uh, you know uh, focus in this very motive i'm uh, just taking one of the um, definitions of emotions given by ising where he says that emotion is basically a complex state okay, which involves heightened perception of an object or a situation, <coughs> widespread bodily changes, an appraisal of felt attraction or repulsion and behavior organized towards approach or withdrawal. Now uh, frankly speaking many many things are there in this definition what we will do is that we will uh, break it up for our convenience no? and this will very easily let us know that what are the basic elements in of a emotional state. First it says that uh, no, it is a complex state okay, which involves increased heightened perception of object or a situation. So there is an object in your environment or there is a situation that you are experiencing. Okay and the perception of the object or the scenario okay it is uh, relatively uh, know heightened in nature one two that widespread bodily changes uh, could be induced because of the presence of the object or the situation where you are okay so there are certain physiological changes that takes place two third that an appraisal of felt attraction of repulsion either uh, that very uh, know bodily changes and the object or the situation attracts you, you move, you feel moving towards it or uh, it, it induces a feeling of repulsion in you wherein you feel uh, know going away from that object or that very situation. Okay. And the fourth that you organize your behavior which either goes for an approach type of a reaction or for a withdrawal type of a reaction. Okay. So either you tend to you know, go and uh, face that object, that uh, situation or you tend to withdraw from that object or from that situation. So primarily four important processes are put together in this very definition. Now if you look at uh, you know, the basic elements of uh, a emotional state, okay, it has you know, multiple uh, processes involved into it. First the physiological reaction okay physiological reaction would primarily be that uh, the moment you 
uh, start experiencing an emotion okay certain uh, changes takes place in the, uh, in within the physiological system of the body uh, i would slightly deviate uh, in terms of making you understand uh, know how, what type of physiological changes takes place there are interesting theories in psychology the in fact the very first theory of emotion that was proposed long long back it talked about the fact that uh, say you respond in a given situation okay you have a stimulus a situation an object you respond to it okay and it is your response that makes you experience the emotion so that would primarily mean say a uh, a dog is chasing you you run away from there and then you start looking back at your own activity that is you are running away from an object and that experience makes you afraid okay so primarily it is not the presence of the dog who is trying to reach you makes you scared rather it is your own physiological reaction that makes you scared little later this theory was revised uh, which again said that these two processes run parallel okay and since then you know many 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 things have been added to uh, the research in emotion but something that uh, you know remains universally true is that certain set of emotions they induce certain changes in the body and they would elevate the processes of the body say for example the blood pressure might increase the pulse rate might undergo a change the sensitivity level the electrical conductance at the surface of the skin that might undergo a change okay in fact uh, no uh, there might be certain changes that could be observed in terms of uh, say the brain waves there are interesting studies which also says know that uh, what type of uh, emotion one has uh, experienced can also be detected only by looking at the contraction of selected muscles on the face okay there are very good uh, emg studies the electromyography study uh, no where uh, this very area of the face okay so, uh, no sensors are attached to it and you just look at the object okay and depending on the changes that takes place in terms of contraction of these muscles or rarefaction of these muscles one can make out okay what type of emotion you actually uh, experienced okay this type of uh, you no know, changes that takes place within the body is basically one of uh, you no know, the primary indicators which is used in lie detection tests okay so in cases of uh, say uh, forensic investigation if somebody is uh, you no know, put under uh, lie detection okay uh, i i'm sure many of you must be aware of how lie detection is conducted no initially what happens uh, say if you are a suspect one investigating officer you know interrogates you that investigating uh, officer would be somebody from the local police station okay and the record of the question that was asked to you and the, your responses are retained by the local authorities when you are taken to a forensic science lab okay those questions along with uh, you know many other questions also okay in a random order they are asked to you once again okay uh, all sensitive indicators of the bodies are taken like uh, blood pressure like pulse rate like uh, no perspiration rate okay uh, the uh, no change gsr changes the change, change at the skin conductance level okay uh, it's not uh, very frequently used but there could be a possibility okay wherein you can even analyze uh, primarily uh, two of the brain waves to uh, find out if there was uh, you know some type of a deception here in this case or not and a very in uh, interesting research which is being conducted nowadays uh, is in terms of the pupillary dilation okay so just looking at you know how much you dilate uh, your pupil is all could also be uh, constituted as an indicator of deception now certain questions which uh, doesn't uh, invoke some type of emotion in you and therefore your physiological reactions are different and suddenly there is a change in the physiological reaction when some uncomfortable questions are asked to you 
Now the changes that a lie detector records on the basis of which uh, the scientist in the forensic science lab declare that yes okay, you did speak lie on these, these, these questions are again based on the physiological reactions uh, which are recorded by the given machine. Okay. Same, techno uh, same uh, technology is also used uh, when uh, uh, no, you look at your own uh, physiological reactions in a biofeedback clinic. Okay. Uh, to the best of my knowledge we do not have too many biofeedback clinics uh, in the hospitals in our country, but I know selected hospitals where there is a specialized clinic called biofeedback clinic. And biofeedback clinic uh, is nothing but basically you are simply made to see your bodily functions, autonomic bo nervous system functions okay, what we are referring to here as physiological reactions okay, on this screen. Okay. So, certain sensors are attached to selected parts of your body. On the monitor you see your own blood pressure, you see your own heartbeat, you, you see your own you know, GSR records, you see how your uh, know, how what is the depth of your uh, respiration breathing. Okay, you see you know, how strongly your heart pumps, okay, everything you see on the monitor okay. and all uh, you are told is that see there is a by and large a standard template how people should ideally breathe okay, or what is the uh, you know, standard way the heart should beat. Either your heart is beating slowly or it beats faster. You just look at the monitor okay, and uh, you know, try your best uh, to make your own uh, you know, physiological functions match the standard template. And believe me uh, few minutes of trial and you would realize that yes you can manipulate it, okay, it is not at all difficult. Now few minutes of exposure and you realize oh I can uh, know tamper my own bodily system then. This means that if you are periodically asked to come to such clinics okay, and uh, using that machine you are asked at say uh, know usually this is uh, know how your physiological function rea uh, works, this is how your body reacts okay. and uh, now with the help of the machine you have learned how to tame your own bodily system after certain trials you do not even need a machine. No? You know that fine this is what I think, you know that this is what I feel, this is what I think and this is how I get a control over my own physiological reaction and it is possible, perfectly possible. Okay. Uh, I do not think we will have uh, time to do that, but uh, 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 if you visit the psychology lab here, okay, we also have this machine and you can see for yourself know how easily you, know, you can. Uh, manipulate your own physiological reactions, okay. but that was in terms of control mechanism. Okay. Right now what we are talking about is that one of the prominent process that is involved in emotional reaction is uh, changes that takes place you know, in a covert fashion in terms of the physiological functions of the body. Okay. So, whether you like it or not certain types of emotion will lead to certain type of changes within the physiological mechanism. Two, there would certainly be certain behavioral reaction when you experience an emotion okay. and that is you uh, know get affected with uh, the presence or the absence of a particular type of an object or a situation the initial definition that we looked at. Okay. So, presence of the stimuli in the environment okay, makes you behave in a particular way. Okay. Uh, think of certain uh, situations. No? Right now when I am quoting it as example, uh, it might appear hypothetical, but uh, all of you I am sure must have experienced such type of things. Uh, you enter uh, a train, a compartment okay, and then you have a foul smell all around you. Okay. It is uh, no, no, so pungent that you feel even vomiting. Okay, there would be you know presence there is a presence of an aroma there, a bad smell there okay. and accordingly your behavioral reaction changes. Okay. You decide to immediately get out of the bogey, immediately leave the train. Okay. 
in the same train you enter there there is no foul smell you take your seat and then you realize there is a beautiful girl on the other side of the seat. Okay. Your entire uh, no, uh, behavioral reaction changes, okay. you then realize that uh, no, the second occupant of the another seat okay, has a small baby who keeps on crying all the time, your behavioral reaction changes. Okay. So, irrespective of uh, no, uh, uh, the fact that you remain constant as an individual, the moment the situation would change in the environment depending on the person environment relationship you would realize uh, that you would be tempted to come forward with a behavioral reaction. Third important factor in uh, emotional uh, processes is the expressive reactions. Okay. Expressive reaction once again is a, is a byproduct of the person environment interaction where you express yourself. Okay. Now, in psychology you will find you know uh, very rich literature on both types of expressions verbal expressions and non-verbal expressions. Okay. Verbal expressions where you, you know verbalize your feelings, non-verbal expressions it could be through your facial expressions it could be through your gestures. Okay. There could even be uh, you know, imagination, thought dependent type of a reaction that uh, you contemplate. Okay. Now, expressive reaction usually would be those uh, no expressions which are very overtly visible, but there is always a possibility of non-verbal uh, reactions also. Okay. There is again you know great deal of research on all of this you no know, verbal, non-verbal okay, all of this has been very extensively researched. And then the last one is that there is something called subjective experience. Okay. Now, subjective experience is an experience that you as an individual had in a given type of a situation. Okay. And the experience that you had okay, might not match with rest of the people who were in the same situation. Okay, it could be extremely, extremely, extremely different. Okay, completely divergent from others who had uh, you know, experienced the same thing. But the, in terms of subjective experience, okay, you find that there could be a difference. Okay, uh, for example, the same example if we take. Okay, you confront uh, say uh, an object that makes you very scared okay, and the expression of fear that you have in your face okay, uh, might be different from the expression of fear that somebody else has on uh, his or her face. Okay, the intensity of the expression might change. The way you respond okay, to that scary situation, it might be different uh, and it could be completely different you no know, uh, when a third person shows a reaction to uh, a scary situation okay in terms of behavioral reactions okay uh, we all differ in terms of subjective experience also we differ but then uh, there is a great deal of what you call overlap when it comes to expressive reaction and when it comes to physiological reactions okay so, these are interesting uh, know, uh, developments uh, when you look at uh, emotion as a process. Many things have been uh, know, studied at length for example, uh, how the physiological systems uh, know, get affected in a given emotional state one, two uh, the changes know, that we were talking about in terms of the bodily reaction when it comes to forensic investigation and other types of uh, uh, changes. Uh, even the recent trend of work which is uh, you know, going on in terms of uh, looking at the pupillary changes. Okay. And uh, if you again look at uh, the current set of uh, uh, theories that are being proposed in this area, you find a beautiful description of something called uh, cognitive emotion regulation, okay. uh, which primarily means that uh, you can have some type of a cognitive appraisal based control over your own emotional processes. Okay. 
think of a situation uh, you are an office bearer okay, who feels something, but is not supposed to express it. Okay. However, strong you feel within outwardly you cannot express it outwardly you have to still remain very quiet calm composed. I uh, will give you some real life examples minus the names. I uh, know of somebody who was uh, once caught in ambush in uh, uh, central part of India okay, while he was uh, returning back after a search operation in a Naxal affected village. Okay. So, the whole convoy was moving and that was the joint team of the local uh, police force and the central reserve police force. He being the officer was in one of the gypsies okay, and the vehicle the, pet, uh, the petrol vehicle which was just in front of him which was supposed to you know uh, clear off the route for these people uh, suddenly landed up on a mine and then it blasted and because his vehicle was just behind it okay, he could see everything. So, he saw the vehicle you know, uh, flying up in the air, then uh, body parts getting mutilated, falling down on the ground. And uh, he told me that uh, two of uh, his bodyguards who were with him for last several years were also in that uh, vehicle which exploded. Okay. And then uh, you know, say for example, if you know some somebody called Ram Singh, okay, this is not the true name, hypothetical name. Okay. Now, how difficult, how painful it is okay, to see uh, Ram Singh getting converted into pieces. Okay. It agitates you within, but then say a media team approaches you asks you about your experience okay. and you are supposed to show heightened degree of calm and composure on your face that yes this is what happened and uh, we will take stringent action. Inwardly you feel uh, know that pain outwardly you still have to show, know, show that no, no, no I am a brave soldier who experienced it and will fight back okay, I am not at all disturbed. Okay. This is one of the examples. No? When I am sure no, sometimes some situation might have confronted you, uh, when you must have felt crying okay? or when you must have thought of oh enough bursting into anger, but then because of situational re, uh, restrictions you decided not to burst. Okay? Because of uh, situational interpretation you decided not to cry in there. Okay. So, these are you know, the part of cognitive emotion regulation we are not going into the details of it. <coughs> in terms of uh, expressive reaction once again you know, uh, it is important for us as an individual not only to display through our uh, expressions, but also we should be skillful in terms of understanding the expressions of others. Okay. Again a uh, very true example, uh, a very different type of a situation. Somebody uh, known to our professional group uh, lost one of the family members and then we decided uh, to uh, visit his house, uh, pay our tribute show our solidarity to that family. What we had decided was that uh, all of us will go independently, but we, we had decided the time that around this time all of us would uh, know within 5 10 minutes range all of us would reach that house okay, and then uh, we will be there with that family for some time. In our group we had somebody. Uh, who uh, was of a little advanced age, but was not married. 
uh, this, this has nothing to do with marriage, but uh, what I am trying to say is that perhaps that very person did not get those many opportunities in life okay, to uh, know, judge expressions of others repeatedly. When you are in a group setup, when you live in a group setup, you periodically look at the expressions of others no? and therefore, your ability to uh, know, decipher the emotions of others through the faces increases. Okay. Now, this person who goes there and instead of uh, know, asking an appropriate question, simply ask, so how are you? Okay. Now, somebody has lost somebody in the family okay, and you ask that person, how are you? Okay. Now, socially this is an irrelevant question, no? should not be asked at that point in time. Okay. And the rest everybody started looking at that very person, no? that, oh, what type of question did you ask? Okay. So, in terms of uh, know, adjustment, it is also important that you tend to mask certain things, you tend to neutralize certain things, we will come to, to those things little later. Okay. When you feel angry, but on the face you try you to you know, retain that neutrality as far as possible. You should not show your expression. No? Just uh, you uh, gave your mid semester examination and say for example, uh, one of the questions you did not understand appropriately. Okay. Fantasy, emotion, independence, dependence. Okay, you come and ask me and I say that I cannot explain it right now okay. and may be that you felt no giving question paper back to throwing that question paper back to me, take your question paper. No, I am also not interested in giving them it is an exam. Okay. I have asked uh, for you for a clarification and you say no, no, the during examination I would not explain it. Okay. But then you do not have a choice, because you know that you run a higher risk, if you show this, this type of an emotion. Okay. So, even though you felt throwing the question paper on my face, you said ok sir and you go back and take your seat okay. and inwardly you feel oh, all my fantasies and emotions are now directed towards you, but I do not have a choice, but to write the answer to the question. Okay. And uh, no, it saves us a lot because uh, no, uh, the moment you look at expressions of others, you realize that find what the other person experiencing, and accordingly you can tame your own reactions, and therefore you try to minimize conflicts as far as possible. Now, behavioral reactions. What we have talked here was no that physiological, behavioral, expressive, and subjective experiences. Now we will drop three of them. We are now exclusively looking at the behavioral reaction, because we are into the psychology class right now. Had this been a physiological psychology class, then we would have gone to the first one first, no? the physiological reactions, but we are primarily now banking on the behavioral reactions and since this slide, we would only and only talking about the behavioral reactions. Now, behavioral reactions, they directly govern our approach or avoidance reactions. Okay. Now, I decide to approach you, I decide to uh, go away from you okay. and that primarily you know, decides in the long run uh, you know, uh, how would be uh, the relationship, what type of relationship finally we would maintain. So, are we going to have a stronger bond between the two of us or is it that we would have a very weak bond between two of us or is it that now onwards we are strangers and we will not interact at all. Okay. And primarily it is the behavioral reaction which also would decide in the long run okay, uh, the adjustment level of both the people who were put in that very situation. Okay. Uh, somebody with uh, whom you had a terrible fight and you decided to remain enemy forever somebody with whom you had a terrible fight and then you understood that there is nothing so beautiful in retaining the fight, but there is a beauty in understanding each other and becoming friends and you decide to become friends rather becoming enemies. Okay. 
you have a terrible fight with somebody and then you decide that fine uh, no there is no beauty in uh, fighting each other but i do not appreciate your view point and you do not appreciate my view point and hence we remain separated completely insulated from each other okay we will not interact with each other at all all such possibilities exist no? so basically these behavioral reactions okay uh, will primarily uh, decide whether you would approach that uh, individual or you would try to withdraw from that individual it could be for a given situation also whether you would approach certain type of situation or whether you would uh, try to stay away from certain type of situations okay uh, later on when we uh, come to that self assessment session that i had promised as part of this course at that time we would also be you know uh, you would yourself uh, uh, would self administer a test uh, which is primarily uh, designed to measure social anxiety in you okay and one of the components of social anxiety is the fear of negative evaluation okay i as an individual feel nay 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 i won't go in that situation because how people would start judging me say if i ask you uh, anybody who can, who would like to share one experience here okay many of you would hesitate coming to this side of the desk no? the reason being see when you are on that side okay you feel still it's a safer place for you the moment you come here okay you realize that everybody is looking at me no there is uh, no a default assessment that takes place okay and you don't want to be under scrutiny by so many people and therefore you say even though you want to say something you will keep quiet after the lecture is over you quietly come and ask the question okay this is a very common practice no because uh, you keep thinking twice thrice how to ask a question okay in front of others because others will start thinking are you couldn't even understand this also i understood it long back before coming to the class okay so this is important behavioral reactions because the whole of uh, no withdrawal and avoidance okay uh, the whole of uh, no the reaction in terms of whether you would approach whether you would avoid uh, in the coming days that would be decided by your behavioral reactions in the long run coming back to emotion uh, since uh, the time of darwin there has been you know long 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 debate okay in terms of identifying uh, what are the basic emotions or is there a component of universality in emotion okay this is a very old debate now it has been resolved thankfully basic emotion means emotions which by default will stay in all human beings okay universality of emotion means whether you are uh, here or in some other part of the globe okay but you would certainly display your emotions this way so that would be the universality and uh, there were many 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 models now the understanding is that we have six basic emotions as human beings <clears throat> so whether you are in india whether you are in some other country okay or even if you have been born at a very isolated place okay still you would have uh, know these basic emotions happiness sadness fear anger surprise and disgust okay these are our six basic emotions happiness sadness fear anger surprise disgust fine rest of the emotions they are considered to be a combination of two of them okay there are few more uh, emotional experiences but they are considered to be the intensification of these basic emotions or uh, they are supposed to be uh, know the by product of combination of two of these basic emotions we won't go into uh, know those composite emotions we won't go into those uh, know intensified versions of emotional basic emotions uh, 
there is a very beautiful theory uh, given by Plutchik, uh, where he talks about all this, no? where he talks about the uh, folding, it is like say unfolding of the petals. Okay. So, say if you have a leaf okay, of a flower, okay, you unfold it once, you unfold it twice. So, he has taken all basic emotions, okay. first level of intensified reaction, second level of intensified reaction. And so, you have the, the whole sphere okay. and then uh, he also talks about combinations. When x 1 and x 2 combines, then what happens? When x 1 and x 3 combines, then what happens? x 2 and x 3, then what happens? A beautiful, beautiful, beautiful theory, but we are not right now going into those theories. Another important way of looking at emotion was in terms of uh, certain major attributes, major attributes like valency of the emotion. <coughs> so, we have six basic emotions. Now, talk in terms of valency of emotion, valency would be you divide emotion into two clusters positive emotions and negative emotions. Happiness is a positive emotion, surprise is a positive emotion, sadness, fear, anger, disgust they are all negative emotions. Okay. So, one way of looking at emotion could be the valency of emotion, second important way of looking at emotion could be the directionality of emotion. Directionality means whether that emotion makes you approach or avoid the situation. Happiness, what type of emotion is it? It is an approach emotion. No? I feel happy being here, therefore, I would come at 8 o'clock tomorrow also, approach emotion. Okay. This type of situation makes you very sad, ah, come on yeah. you try to stay away from that uh, situation. Okay. Happiness, approach, sadness rep will repel you, you are angry, angry is also an approach emotion. You feel angry and then you feel directly going to the source of anger and express it in the full blown shape, if you calculate that the risk is worth taking. If you calculate that the risk is not worth taking, then instead of you know, reacting to that particular individual, you show some other form of uh, aggressive retaliation. Okay. What forms that we would come after two modules, when we will exclusively talk about aggression and how it affects adjustment. Okay. So, valency, directionality and again if you see here directionality the approach and avoidance once again comes here. So, behavioral reaction okay, will always have this thing by default. There is a very interesting uh, know, proposition it is called eco cultural framework given by Berry and later on revised in 2002 by Berry and his colleagues okay, which talks about three kinds of incidental influences, sorry, three kinds of ant, uh, antecedental uh, influences. No? First, the ecological uh, indices, two, the socio-political indices and third, the aggregate psychological characteristics. Okay. Once again, we are not going into any of these theories, any of these uh, framework, but this is just to say you know, that you still have uh, certain major uh, factors which influences your behavioral reactions in a given situation. Okay. And these behavioral reactions will in turn uh, trigger a set of reactions. The other person in the environment will react back to you, this in turn will demand you to react in certain way and this chain might get triggered. This could be one possibility. The other possibility is that your uh, uh, reaction. Okay, uh, meets some type of a buffer reaction, wherein your native uh, reaction gets diffused and therefore, there is no retaliation from the other end okay. and you are very easily accommodated with all type of behavioral reactions that you have shown. Now, looking at emotion and adjustment together, okay, the relationship between uh, know, emotion and adjustment in terms of uh, how emotion helps you adjust in a given situation and also in terms of how it finally, facilitates your subjective well being. It has also been very well studied in behavioral sciences. Okay. The quality of adapt, uh, adaptation shown by an individual 
is proportionate to the happiness one derives in life and overall life satisfaction. Okay. This means that your own qualification as an individual okay, to adapt to a given type of situation okay, that is directly proportionate to how much of satisfaction and happiness you would derive in life. Okay. Uh, I think last week uh, a beautiful uh, piece of research has come forward, which says that uh, you must have heard the famous proverb okay, that uh, money cannot buy you happiness, no? a famous proverb. Uh, banking on this the researchers based on their empirical data says that money cannot buy you happiness directly, but with the help of money if you buy things for others that in turn can make you happy. Okay. You got the point. Okay. It is a very interesting research you know, that you have money you can afford to buy things for others and hence you buy things for others and you derive happiness out of it. So, money has not led you to buy happiness directly, but indirectly you can still derive happiness. It is uh, something like uh, say you buy crackers and you, you know, burst them, you derive happiness out of it. Okay. The, the second possibility where you buy crackers and some of the crackers you give it to others who do not have crackers with them and you watch them you know, blowing it and their happiness in turn induces sense of happiness within you. I am sure at uh, Railway stations, it is a very common sight. You buy some food stuff for you, and somebody comes asking you, begging you for food. I am sure all of you must have seen that if you have traveled by train. Okay. Uh, and you uh, know, many a times that urge comes from within, you know, that uh, you just took the plate, and here is somebody you know, who with folded hand asks you uh, for food. And in, instead of taking food yourself, you give the whole plate to that individual, you buy another plate for yourself. And the happiness that you derive out of it is uh, know, far greater than the satisfaction you would have otherwise derived while consuming that food yourself and saying that you know, this beggar oh, go, 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 go from here. Okay. So, uh, primarily it is again you know uh, your ability to adapt in a given situation, whether it is uh, know, uh, adaptation demands you uh, to little uh, know, uh, neutralize your own emotions, whether it asks you to intensify your emotion or whether it asks you to <coughs> mask your emotions. But I will take one example of each of them, but what happens that this uh, know, adaptation finally makes others and you yourself realize that fine I have proven my uh, know, ability as an individual to appropriately respond in this situation. People would appreciate you, you would also feel satisfied. Okay. Take the first uh, example, no? where you intensify your emotional reaction. You have uh, gone to board your train and you realize that uh, the compartment where your uh, birth lies is, has been occupied by others. Okay. And uh, your request does not fetch you the desired result. No? You tell them that this is a reserved seat for me and they say okay, so sit somewhere. The person who is occupying your seat does not leave uh, that very seat. It is also a very common type of a thing no, in certain parts of this country. Okay. And suddenly you intensify your emotion, okay. you burst and the person okay, who is occupying your seat realizes that there is no point still retaining the seat. So, let me vacate it, he says okay, 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 now you take your seat, I will, uh, no, but there is no point showing anger like this. Na? Okay, I was just sitting because you did not come and then he leaves the seat, you get your desired outcome. Your outcome is based on the intensification of the emotion. Second type of situation. Uh, where you realize that there is a need to neutralize your emotion. The person uh, 
occupying your seat okay seems to be much bell built okay has couple of arms and ammunitions with him can show you uh, know all types of uh, things that you would otherwise never think of experiencing in life okay uh, you just request him and he says go away from here don't ever show me a ticket i can show you 100 tickets like this okay and then uh, he says why don't you sit there and even though you feel you no know, retaliating you decide not to intensify your emotion you decide not to show your uh, anger and rage because your calculation says that you yourself might be at the recipient end you no know, if there is a fight between two of you therefore you quietly <coughs> occupy a seat which is next to it you do not argue okay and uh, there could be a third situation where you mask your emotion masking of emotion means the inward emotion is something else but outwardly you put some other emotion over it you look at the person and say hurry hurry you are sitting here please 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 no problem no you can sit here i book seats for others only no you please keep sitting here okay so you did not even think of neutralizing your feeling rather you thought of masking it putting another emotion over your original feeling we do all these things in our life at times we show our proportionate reactions at times we intensify our reactions at times we mask our reactions at times we neutralize our emotions okay because we realize that in this given situation this is what is prudent this is what will give me the best result and therefore you do it and because you have calculated that this will give you the best possible result okay and you get back therefore you derive happiness out of it that i finally got what i wanted you derive a sense of satisfaction and once again this all this feeling of happiness and satisfaction that you derive out of your ability to adapt in a given situation okay it positively affects your subjective well being your own feeling of how good you are okay uh, how happy you are that uh, experience increases now emotion has certain biological universals okay but what makes it significant for adjustment process is the socio cultural variability you no know? so there are biological universals you know that this emotion will have this this emotion will have this but then what you realize that there are variation in terms of the socio cultural uh, demands and it is basically the variance in the socio cultural uh, needs in given situations which finally uh, puts you under some type of uh, pressure that your emotion needs to be like this okay now you can broadly divide uh, you know society like uh, the individualistic society and collectivist society now few societies such as the agricultural society they lay emphasis on the compliance okay whereas other societies uh, no might cherish independence no for example our society requires more and more of compliance okay where a uh, major uh, say uh, stakeholder okay stakeholder who has otherwise more power and authority invested in him or her okay decide certain things and then people try to comply to it you go to a shopping mall okay and then uh, the wife says that why don't we have bhel puri the kid says that why don't we go to uh, those uh, no uh, uh, to the fun zone where we can have uh, some toys to play okay and you as the major stakeholder in the family says no we'll all go to this you take the third direction okay and you realize that very quickly the other members of the family will comply to you the wife might say oh how irritating this person is okay i feel uh, having bhel puri and he is not even uh, allowing me to have it 
the kids might feel at how boring my father is that he is not even allowing us to play in the fun zone. But the fact remains that both of them they comply to what you have finally decided. Okay. This is at the small unit at the family level, at the social level also there is great degree of compliance and compliance to even absurd practices also. You remember when we were talking about uh, normality, we had taken that example of uh, you know, making the small babies fall from the rooftop of a place of worship. Okay. Now, this is absurd practice, but you comply to it. Okay. Tomorrow, we would continue and uh, we would look at uh, you know, the conformity and compliance factor. We will try to look at uh, you know, the difference of practice between the individualistic and collectivist uh, culture and uh, if possible we will uh, see two three visuals uh, to make out that in collectivist society like ours okay, there could be conformity and compliance even to certain weird type of practices and we do not question it because we show heightened degree of compliance.